Good evening, all. And my name is Brendan Hogan, Chair of the Public Works Commission. Welcome to our special August 21 edition of our Public Works Commission meeting. The first item on the agenda is the agenda itself. Looking at uh, two main. We will be going to the City Council on September 13th. Uh, I am happy to bring it to the September meeting of the commission should we want to have a conversation about it. We're excited to talk about it. So uh, I defer to the chair and the vice chair of whether it's uh, a, a good item to put on the agenda. I just didn't, I just thought it was really an important thing and it's not at all referenced in our agenda. And so I didn't want it to not mm -hmm. end up in a, you know, have it somewhere on, on, our, on our agenda if it's something, I mean, okay. I think it's an important thing. So yeah. great. Can we bring that forth at the at the end yeah. during the um, um, commissioner comments? Commissioner comments? Well, we did, yeah, yeah, so you'll okay. figure out a, it'll probably be on another Yeah, feel free to touch on that with yeah. any commissioner on, comments, and we okay. can give it a larger treatment yeah. uh, on a warrant agenda item next time around. All right. That was my only question about that. Okay. Thanks. Any other discussion around the motion? Seeing none, to, let's go to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye for myself. Any opposed? The agenda is passed unanimously. Is there any commissioner online? No, not nobody uh, at this time. Okay. Or the five present. Thank you. Keep us posted if that shall change. <laughs> uh, next item on the agenda is public forum. Can you tell if there's any interested members of the public? Yeah, Chair Hogan, it looks like somebody is has joined us uh, via phone so if that's a member of the public who's interested in joining us for public comment please use the star nine uh, feature on your phone and that will alert us that you wish to speak if for any chance if for any reason you're having any trouble you can email us in real time bpw communications at burlingtonbt.gov and we'll try to troubleshoot through this meeting if you're having any trouble if that happens to be a commissioner uh, also use star nine and we can promote you over even if you're on the phone Okay, so at this time, Once, nobody going twice. Up. All right, moving forward. There is no consent agenda this evening, so we'll take it to item four an agenda 100 Bank Street parking agreement. Welcome an introduction from staff, if yeah. you'd like to. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, well, thank you for uh, holding a special meeting for this. Um, so, this is a uh, parking agreement with 100 Bank Street. Um, which is adjacent to the redevelopment project downtown. Um, this parking agreement is for an existing building. And what it does is basically provides some security for that building over the next five years for their tenants for parking. So basically, this is the standard agreement that we have with all of our parkers. But what we've done is we've taken the termination clause out and replaced it with a manage, basically a management clause, if that's a way to say it. So what we've done is we said for the first five years, you have an allocation of 200 parking spaces. And after that first five year period, your allocation goes away. You get what you use. So the way parking works is we give an allocation and then people can organizations can use up to that limit. So as we're managing the garage, there's this sort of fluff in there that's really tricky to manage. We have some, we have some parking agreements where they have 100 parkers and they are 100 al allocated and they've only got 10 people parking. I mean, COVID has really screwed all of this up and made it much, much more difficult. So like in my perfect world, I'd love the allocation and usage to be the same. So that's what this agreement does at year six. It says what you've got at the end of year five, that's what you get at year six. So it gives them the security for five years that they have, can say to their tenants, we have parking for you. And it gives us security after year six ongoing that we don't have to get rid of that fluff. The fluff went away. They get what they're using from the previous year. Now, we've offered to them we can increase it if we have a capacity, just like we have with everybody else. Um, but the termination, the, what we're giving up is the termination clause. But ostensibly, everyone else's general, uh, the, the general agreement is unlimited anyway. I mean, the 
termination clause is there, but they're indefinite. They go on and on and on. So that's, that's the basic gist, is we see it from an operations perspective for the garages. It's win-win. If we get, they get some short-term security, we get long-term security. Um, that, and that's the crux of this, <laughs> this multi-page document. <laughs> so I guess I'd like to open it up to questions. I mean, I've been deep in the weeds, and I hope that yeah. gave you some sense of the details. Are there any other critical things that I missed in there? I would just add, I think it's a good description of the parking agreement itself. What the settlement overall does for City Place, Burlington, 100 Bank, and the city is resolve multiple lawsuits and one of the components of the settlement is approval of this agreement. One of the things that 100 Bank would then give to the city is rights, property rights underneath their building to enable us to reconnect Pine Street to its historic alignment that was torn from the community 50 years ago through urban renewal that now we largely recognize to be a mistake in dividing up our downtown. So as part of this agreement, should the commission approve it, the council approved their uh, components earlier. This is the last remaining item and this would unlock the settlement that would give the city the property rights uh, for Pine Street to be built. It is interesting to note, and I won't spend too much time, but the amended and restated development agreement with City Place has them, if their project doesn't get under construction in a timely fashion, they are still required to build Pine and St. Paul, the two new blocks on their dime. If TIF cannot be used, it is their responsibility to construct the streets under a modified design. So this is an important step to secure the property rights from our perspective to re-knit our downtown together, which is why we asked for a special meeting to have this be acted in a timely fashion so that we can get beyond this period of uncertainty with uh, the settlement agreement. Thanks. No, thank, thank. That's great context. I'm so focused narrowly on <laughs> getting the garages moving and making sure that it's a good deal for the garages, and Chapin has that broader view of how it works into this whole big, complicated puzzle that yeah. is downtown. Right. Yeah, thank you both for that. Um, with that, I'll check, Mr. Goulding, do we have any uh, interested members of the public for public comment? No interested members of the public, but we do have Commissioner Bose on the line. And oh, he's great. Uh, Welcome, Commissioner Bose. Glad to have you. All right. With that said, we'll bring it to uh, Commissioner discussion around this. Uh, um, see. Commissioner Bose, since we, since we got you, do you have any, uh, uh, I'll hand you the floor, the virtual floor here. Check, check. We think you have you. <laughs> Can we put a little Pablo emoji up there? Yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll pass for now. We'll circle back to you, Commissioner Bowes. Uh, Commissioner Barr. Thank you. So one question that I had, um, and I understand after the five-year agreement, what they use is what they get. What if they exceed the 200? What if they attempt to exceed or ask for more than 200? If we have them, maybe, or? Yeah, that's, that's where mm -hmm. management comes in, and that's the real power of the agreement, is that their allocation equals their usage. So it's not like they're just going to come in and say, ah, we need 50 more, and then maybe they'll use 20. Right. If they say, I need 10 more, they're paying for 10 more right. for the whole year. Even if their 10 more is only for six months, they're committed for the whole year. Right, right. Uh, no proration. So it's, uh, it, yeah, it's a heavily managed situation. And, and I read through all the documents, and it, it, it looks good. So that's really the only one that I have. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Butano. Yeah, thanks so much for uh, preparing everything. Initially, I was a little hesitant to like vote on this, since we are aiming for like net zero, um, sort of like citywide, and the fact that we have up to 200 people parking in the city every day. They have this five-year license to park, basically initially uh, made me hesitant to vote in favor of this, but I understand the importance in actually connecting the street and really allowing everyone that uses the center of the city to actually use it to its 
fullest, and I appreciate how like the final plan includes the, um, I guess like sidewalk level sort of crossing and a lot of that. So there are certainly a lot of pros and cons. My question that I had was regarding this like daily occupancy sort of like projection. It looks like you have 75% of that uh, projected sort of like usage during the daytime and 25% in the evening. Um, sort of like how'd you come to those numbers and it looks like for the daytime it's pretty darn close to the total uh, garage capacity yeah prior getting... to COVID like how often did they actually get to that number Never. and sort of what does the uh, department yeah. do to sort of mitigate that yeah, this is the challenge we have a real challenge I'll be straight up the, this the Lakeview College Street garage is operating at like 35 40 percent capacity day in day out and we base and the allocation numbers I'm showing, and this is the, to my point of allocation versus usage, right? We've got allocation capa uh, a capacity of 225 percent, but we also have, I know of at least three large users that are using 20 percent of their allocation. So it makes it very very hard for us to manage. Um, so we are concerned about occupancy. We've actually, we're bringing in the state of Vermont with 500. We're bringing in the high schools coming back with 300. Um, this won't hit for a while. I'm not sure when they're planning on this hitting, but the po point is we've shut down the waiting list. So we have a growing waiting list of people that want to park, monthly parkers in there. We've shut it down until we can get the state in, until we can get the high school back, until we see this hit, until we start, you know, COVID is still coming out. So we are, we're, we have this sort of conundrum where we're only at 35, 40% occupancy right now, but I'm looking at numbers that could put us over. And I'm a little concerned. So, you know, appropriately concerned is, you know, we're, we're making management decisions around that, those numbers. So does that answer, does that answer your question? Yeah. <clears throat> And the 25-75 split is really an, uh, a, a, an acknowledgement of the hotel activity because we're sell it. We do sell quite a bit to the hotels, um, so the hotels are, are busy overnight. So you know, some of this is just spitballing. Mm -hmm. So like during the day in like 2019, for example, how many days were we actually at full capacity where people coming in could not? Never. Never. Pre-COVID, I want to say the max number I ever saw in there was something like 800 out of 1153. And that's one day or something, you know. Marketplace garage would be full routinely prior to COVID. This garage, July 3rd, some years would be full. And other than that, not full any other time of year. Right. Right. Actually, marketplace garage is still filling on a somewhat regular basis, even now as we recover is that's a different management strategy <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess my last kind of question comes down to, to like the mitigation right like you know this is a really like long-term contract and whereas all other parts of the city are looking to kind of minimize sort of the climate impact right sort of what what is like the department of public works doing to sort of minimize it in light of this long-term commitment where a lot more people are going to be parking and you know including the center of the city kind of more of like a broad kind of question i was just thinking about mm -hmm. yeah. i think that's well described in the next agenda item where we can talk about you know our initiatives going forward to uh, support the net zero plan uh, that the city has and we've always looked well, always under uh, our leadership, Jeff's and my leadership, we've looked at the traffic fund, which has some more flexibility than the parking fund, uh, to be uh, able to be entrepreneurial and use some of the extra funds when that fund is performing to fund things like the local match to St. Paul Street, the Great Streets Project. Uh, it funded Bike Share when Bike Share launched. So these types of efforts uh, to better manage the parking and transportation system can uh, potentially uh, help reinvest in other initiatives. The challenge with the garages is that the charter is very prescriptive as to how the funds raised in the garages can be used and it's really restricted on the garages and lots themselves. So it's more of a, of if they perform well, it doesn't become a drag on other initiatives in the city. In some places, a garage can be a lost leader, 
and require general fund contribution. We're working to make the garages fully independent, standalone, so that all general fund money, all traffic money can go to other activities and not have to pay to keep in a garage going. Thank you. Commissioner Overby. I'd like to, I mean, I've had a chance to ask quite a few questions between the, ahead of time. So I'd like to make sure that other people get a chance to ask their questions first, sure. I mean, if I mean, that would be possible. Would you like to briefly summarize the, the questions that you've got answered? Um, I, I could do that. I have, I had asked, um, my concerns I think were generally about the fact that there's still unknowns about what parking is going to be put in public parking available in the, um, the city place development. Um, and that it, it was a concern to me that we, we don't know that number and there's been, there's, it's still in litigation. And so that uh, something of what was just brought up uh, about having um, a lot of allocation of spots, but not necessarily, you know, usage of them. And isn't it a bit of a, uh, it, it, it seems like it might be setting a preferential treatment to this one particular property um, to, uh, f for 200 spots when, and some of the other communications we had were about how many, or how many spots are actually, how many passes are actually being used. So my, my, my questions really related to that, that issue, um, the continuing litigation um, that's still underway. There's no decision. There, there's a dispute about the, the 567 parking spots that were destroyed when the mall was destroyed. Uh, there was litigation to make sure that public parking was returned. And at the current, in the current situation, it's either 422 or 426 uh, parking spots will be put back for something like 470, 37 par apartments. So there will, right now there is no plan for any additional public parking to replace those 560 some spots. So my concern was the, the number, the 200, um, get, you know, making a commitment to provide for five years, 200 passes to one, um, one uh, building basically. And uh, so th those are the kind of questions that I had. And I know the, the I got good information back from um, Director Paget about how how it's a good thing to have the ability to, to, to not be, you know, like he just mentioned, um, having 100 allocated but only 10 people from that commitment using passes so there's no money except for 10. And it sort of feels a little bit like that's what might be happening here as well, that we're tying up not just the 100, you know, we're talking 200 for five years. Um, and right now, and I think one of the questions I'd ask is how many are currently of the, of the ones that they had, uh, or like 25 people from the 100 Bank Street are actually using parking passes. So where did that number 200 come from? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and, I, and I do understand that the, the, the request was made for 200 and, and the, the answer was that it really, it's just um, what, what people ask for is what, you know, if it's available, people can get it. So it's like first come, first serve. But this is sort of a bigger deal uh, for five years. It's not changeable. Um, so, so those are the kind of questions and those are the kind of answers that I, that I got. And, um, and so I was actually wanting to ask, you know, separately about the, the, the chart that's here on your, your allocations and expected usages. And I think you answered one of the questions, monthly permits, that chart that's in our packet that says uh, occupancy summary. Um, but that, that was sort of the, that originally was the questions that, that I'd gone back and forth and I shared sure. them with a couple people ahead of time just so that, you know, I was hoping to save some time. Um, but the monthly, per, the, the monthly permits, those are ones that you say people are paying every month, those 653 that are on the chart here? They're individual users, yeah. Yeah, individual. So right now those are people that are paying for a monthly pass and you have a waiting list for more people that want into that. Right. So, so right now we, we're putting on hold anybody that's an individual that would want because we, we need, because we're in effect going to give an allocation for another 200 potentially that we don't know if they're going to use. I think um, you've listed expected usage of 180 of the 200 uh, for, for the Bank Street location. So, but they're, right now they're using 25, but you're, 
the it, building is using 25, but that's that's there's only that's only two that I just happen to remember because we we don't usually yeah, interrogate yeah, no. people as to where their business is. <laughs> we have capacity, we give them the permit, but I know there's at least two or three other allocations that I haven't listed here that are actually in the bank. So th this was an estimate to give us the playing field. I could dig into this way deeper, but just get told the basic story. Um, but there are a number of other organizations in the building already that have allocations. You know, they're small, five or 10 or whatever. Most small companies are five or 10. Um, these hundreds and two hundreds are, are the outliers. Um, but the choice, the decision to shut down the waiting list had nothing to do with 100 Bank. It had everything to do with the state of Vermont coming in and the high school coming back. Eight, with possible, that's 800 out of the 1153, and that just spooked us. So we I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding what well, you're saying. Sorry. So with the, with the state coming in and the high school coming in, that's about 800 Parkers. And I only, I, we know that the high school will be active. You know, I, I did an analysis of their behavior in the spring, and on any given day, there were about 100 permits being used. So about 100 out of the 300, and I think that's probably what I put in here. So I even bumped it, no, what did I do? Yeah, so at 100, I bumped it to 150 in this analysis. But I gotta believe that now that everybody's sort of in the vibe of downtown high school, there's gonna be more use of their permits. I don't know what the behavior of the state is going to be, but I have to believe if the state of Vermont is paying for parking permits for their people, they need them and they're going to be used. So I have to assume that we're gonna get that 800 in, there, 800 in there, and that's what got me a little bit concerned about our occupancy and capacity. So that's why I shut it down. Shutting it down had nothing to do with 200 Bank, because I don't actually know when they're gonna pull the trigger and, and want to actually come in. I know you are such a statistical person, so I am completely uh, confident that you're really doing the best you can to figure out the numbers. I, I'm not trying to, yeah, yeah, you know, no. question that. Um, but but you've, point, you've, you've said that you expect 180 of the 200 spots to be uh, used. Um, and is that, how did that number get? That's just for planning. You know, a good case in point is like the BHS, you know, they said they, they want an allocation of 300. Their actual usage is about 100 or a little less than 100 on any given day. So for planning purposes, I bumped it to 150. So same idea, I said, okay, well, 100 Bank Street might function in a similar way. Something less than what their whole allocation is, let's just take 20 off. It's a planning tool to get right. us an idea I wanted to be assured that I could come to you with a straight face and say, this proposal is not gonna blow us out of the water. Are my numbers perfect? No. Is it the ballpark? Do I believe in the ballpark? Absolutely. Can I, can I add some context, if you don't mind, about parking? Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, so one of the things that in, in the parking world to manage on-street parking is typically managed at 85% capacity. So that means that not too many people are it's not a hunting permit to go find a place. There's gonna be enough ample space. Off street, which is in structures or on campus, for instance, it's around 90%. It can be a little higher than that, but that's because it's more of a fixed fixed area and that's what he's managing. So I don't know if the numbers actually move out to be exactly 90% or something, but that's, that's one of the, the tools, the metrics that we use in trying to make sure that we're at least meeting the demand of, of the people that need to park there uh, with the resources that we have so so that that's one of the things that when I looked at this it just seemed to to fit into place as I was looking at it so just it, if that helps at all yeah, yeah well I I know it's a it's a it's a moving target but then but I was just really my concern is that 200 is a high number and I would be more than willing to do uh, you know some number that was actually based on some actual calculated like how many were they using when there was a mall and they were actually operating at full capacity. But there isn't, that doesn't sound like that was at all how it came about. So that, that's just a concern that I had. That's a concern and a question that why I've asked that question. Yeah. Um, and the other, one of the things that had, you list here estimated daily transient parking of allocation of 150 and then expected usage of 100 daily. So is that the, the ones that you're saying are just the people that would just find their way there and then shop on Church Street or go to a restaurant or something like that. It, inter, you know, that's what they are. Yeah, I usually call, I call it in my, <laughs> transient's the sort of technical term that everybody uses. I like to call it retail parking. 
parking. Call it what? Retail parking. Oh, retail it's parking. It's like okay. the people that come and they're right, paying right. for parking on a day-to-day -day basis. They're well, not getting any discounts. They're not, you know, they're not monthly. They're not weekly. They're not, they just come in. For the so day. right. So the so the so the, uh, the uh, if that if that lot is 1,153 spots, and we only have a hundred retail people using it, and we have a hundred percent of the marketplace garage constantly happening when when normal circumstances not covid um that says a lot and um and and, and it also says if we're that we want it sounds like the priority is more to get the, the the parking pass people using that lot rather than the retail shoppers and am i getting that and so that's why these numbers are really getting big for commitments on on parking passes and that's going to mean that that transient parking like the people that would have parked at the Burlington Town Center parking that is those 500 spots that are gone uh, we're not we're, 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 as a, we're as a city you're making a decision that that's parking lot is not really going to be for that function as much it's because you're not leaving that many spots available for that is, am I understanding that correctly for, for to be able to make that garage financially you know self-sustaining right. the, the conundrum of the marketplace garage being full and the Lakeview College Street garage not being utilized has been a vexing challenge I've been working on for two years. We've, we have done multiple promotions in that garage during the holidays with multiple radio ads, actually a $50,000 ad campaign paid for by uh, the developer. City Place Burlington. City Place Burlington money, Brookfield money, that's what I'm saying, Brookfield money. And it was an aggressive campaign with an aggressive discount, and we got almost no bump in occupancy at the Lakeview College Street Garage. There's a, there's a some block that we haven't found that's blocking people from getting down and parking in there as a retail customer. Um, it's very challenging. But what I do know is that I've got a waiting list of, I think Leonard told me it's like 75 people on the waiting list now people banging down the door to park by the month. So come from the private sector, retail, you know, entre entrepreneurial approach, I'm looking and saying, okay, the market is demanding these two different, they're two garages and they function very differently. Um, so there is no master plan of converting the Lakeview College Street garage into parking for these large groups only. It's, they're the customer that's showing up. That's well, well, well if, the, if the allocation was 125 for this property and 75 were available to the, the onesie twosie monthly people, it's more, more, more work for the city and for you to deal with individual passes, but, it, but, it, but it's philosophically a different strategy. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to vote against this proposal, but I really feel like it's, it's, um, it's not it's not supportive of retail parking and we don't know what's going to happen with there will be retail parking included in the uh, city place and right now it looks like there will be they're not planning to build anything not even enough for one parking spot for each residence in that facility or no retail parking um, so uh, and and I, I think we've talked about the wayfinding is a lot of the problem to get people back to that parking lot and, and out of there so we it may be forget trying to make it retail parking that may be absolutely the best decision but I just I just feel like the number is a little high for the commitment of, of passes for that property um, I get where you're coming from to do it but um, I think it's 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 you're shutting out those 75 people on the waiting list that just don't happen to be part of the Bank Street well, to, to be clear the, the waiting list was not shut down because of this it just happened to sort of all happen at the same yeah. time. Yeah, it shut down because of the choice we made to bring the state of Vermont and and accommodate the high school, which had a serious need. So that's what really pushed it close. And I am chomping at the bit to open it up. I will open it up as soon as I feel like I can sleep at night, opening it up. But I got told Chapin a number of times. My problem is success in filling the garage is pretty close to being defined by failure, by overfilling, <laughs> right? So I have to be very careful. I want to fill it as much as I possibly can, but I don't want to overfill it. So I, uh, this is, and I'm only at 40% right now. So I get that this is really vexing. I'm wrestling with being over capacity, but I'm only at 35, 40%. So this is a balancing act. 
you know, and uh, it's very tricky. I get it. Um, I think that's the, all the questions that I have. And um, all right, thank you. I look forward to hearing other people's questions. Sure. Uh, can we try again, Commissioner Bose. Who are you having? Chair Hogan. So he uh, appears to have dropped off. He, okay. He let me know that his connection keeps dropping. He heard everything, and if it were allowed, he would like to submit a yes vote on the agreement. But I leave that to the rules of the commission. So. Unless the commissioner is able to participate fully and is engaged at the moment of the vote, there is no vote that they can contribute. Thank you for that. So uh, he did want me to let everyone know that his tech troubles have uh, been very spotty, so he's off right now. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the update. Uh, so, Ms. Commissioner Bose, Vice Chair O'Neill All right. So, um, so. Just a couple of, I think, easy questions. How does the transient parking impact like the numbers for the garage? So I'm driving along, uh, Bank Street has 200 spots allocated and they only have 100 employees show up. I can go into the car park, right, and still park? Yep. Okay, yep. I just wanna make sure that. And I think, you know, to your BHS numbers, you know, BHS mom, Kid, school was only like half the kids were in one day, half the kids were the next day. Yeah. I, I think, right. and now that sports are moving on, I think you will see some stability with that. And I think the kids who used to drive are now walking. Um, some who, you know, all the folks in the, in the new North End are now having to drive. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how, how that sugars out um, and balances in this these kind of in uncertain times. Um, I, I also wanted to... Um, just mentioned to um, all the commissioners the state of the system report um, that my colleagues at the Transportation Research Center um, put out, and, it, and it, um, it's a data collection um, that they work with Jeff on, and the car parks in in Burlington and on street parking, and it shows um, really how um, there is plenty of parking in downtown Burlington. Um, if you can Google state of the system, it's on um, the city of Burlington site. I think it's a really informative. It's kind of helped me realize kind of where the kind of crunches and pinches are. So it's a, I think it's a great resource. Um, so this, um, this project will connect these streets again, regardless of um, what happens at City Place, right? Like, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the amended and restated development agreement between the city and uh, City Place Burlington gives a clear timeline under which construction needs to begin in order for TIF to be in, uh, to be used to fund those public improvements. If the developer does not uh, initiate uh, work by that date, and I'm sorry I don't have it right in front of me, it's 2024 sometime I believe that um, that the city can execute a contract with SD Ireland. Uh, at the uh, City Place Burlington expense to construct modified public improvements. They would not be to Great Street standards, but they would be publicly accessible. Instead of granite curb, it would be concrete curb. Uh, it may not have the landscaping and amenities on the street, but would provide a functional pedestrian uh, vehicular connection on both Pine and St. Paul. Okay. Uh, because I, I see these connected. I mean, no pun intended, that uh, reintegrating that, um, that, that grid network. I, you know, once I was informed of the college and, and Lakeview garages, I was like, oh my God, this is a gem and it's so close. I don't drive downtown that much. Um, but when I have to with like an elderly parent, I'm like, oh, this is convenient. I think part of the reason it might be underutilized, and this is based on nothing other than my opinion, is because it's this kind of wonky dead end. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it'd be interesting to see once we open up that connection, what the vibrancy, how that will change um, in, that, in that quadrant of, of the city. So I, 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 I'm hopeful for that. Um, agree. Sorry, I just like, I'm like fogging up here. Um, <laughs> so, um, the, okay, that asks, it asks a question. Um, 
And I guess related to what Commissioner Overy was asking about, like the the the, the, the parking spots from uh, the the public the public parking spots that were removed from removing the car park by um, by Macy's whatever whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. um, how 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 can how can can this like estimated transient parking replace any of those? Is it replacing those? Do we have any data on it? Um, or is it just like we're in COVID and it's still hard to? I, I can't really. Uh, you can't look in your crystal ball, Jeff. I'm sorry. I can, but it's not much. <laughs> okay, and I, I think like I think you know that question is like my point is that we're in these really unusual times still. Um, so trying to figure out these projections, I, I think you have to do the best you can based on whatever predictive measures are kind of in your industry standard. Um, to come up with our best option. Um, and then there was one more question. Um, oh, finally, just one thing. Is there, um, can we request, can the commission request if it's agreeable, um, to just get a, um, if this is approved, to look at where the parking where these numbers are in January. I mean, if these contracts move forward and it's a commitment of five years, um, yeah. you know, maybe we're stuck in that. But well, then to see if there are, you know, kind of any places to twink. And I don't know if January is a good month or spring or, or sometime in, in early 2020 um, so that we can get some data points to see, you know, how these how these numbers are working for, for the city, for the revenue, for the garage. And I think that's really another important point. Um, uh, to highlight is that this will provide some revenue, some much needed revenue for um, the, the downtown parking um, that's so suffered that suffer a loss. annual report for the Lakeview College Street Garage as part of your delegation of the generic agreement anyway, and I can just include a slide about what's going on with Honden Bank. That'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. That, that's it with my more comments and questions. <laughs> Thanks. One sort of answer to your, to your question about uh, can people park e even if it's not full or whatever is this park this agreement is still I think Jim mentioned it is a hunting permit it doesn't guarantee that they can park there it guarantees them access to the garage so it's still up to me in good faith to manage the garage so they can have somewhere to park but to be clear this is not a guarantee of parking and, no, and nobody has a guarantee of None of our agreements are that way. So. Okay, I think that's 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 also a good point. I mean, and I think, you know, looking at the Hilton, BHS, State of Vermont, um, the downtown employees, as well as Bank Street, imagine if 100% of people showed up for work every single day. I, like it's on, it's it just doesn't happen. Um, so I think some of these numbers kind of reflect that you know, people travel, go on vacation, are sick, etc. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Try and stop people. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mr. Gordy, do you have some? Uh, just for public comment, somebody has joined us. I'm not sure if they're interested in speaking. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Okay. Thank you. Um, in terms of commission communications, it just leaves myself. I think I will simply say that in terms of this parking resource that is built and is being under uh, used. <laughs> Uh, in, in recent times, this is, to me, a nice opportunity, right, for uh, revenue usage, energy, not to mention unlocking other agreements for our, our city's downtown. I think it's great. Yeah, thanks for the, the update and all the work that goes into this. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Goulding, I, uh, we typically do uh, the oh yeah, let's uh, let's check for com public comment at this time. Yeah, a new caller has joined us on on uh, Zoom. If you are interested in speaking during this public comment period, please use star nine, and that will alert us that you want to speak now. Given that there's one caller, do you want to err on the side of? Uh, enabling and seeing if they have yeah 
And that person, uh, once we did that, has left us. So it looks like we are not. <laughs> we are off. Scare them off. <laughs> With that, uh, we'll close for public comment. <laughs> Bring it back to uh, the commission for action. We'd certainly uh, entertain any. Can I make a motion to accept staff's recommendation? Please. Thank you for that motion, Commissioner Barr. I second the motion. Second by uh, Vice Chair Neil Vivanco. Thank you. Is there any discussion around that motion? Commissioner Overby. Is it possible to actually propose any changes in the number of the permits, uh, the passes? Like, um, are we stuck with this? Was this negotiated in a way that is not possible for just to say, pick a number that's like 125 passes? And, and then maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe like you've done before, you scale it up if it's 125 the first year because we're saying there's 25 being used now. So you still got fluff of 100 the first year. And then, I don't know, is, are, are, we, are, we, are we able to have that as, a, as an option or are we just, is the, it's just the way it is, you vote for it as, as written? The request was their request. I can only assume they have justification behind that request. So I don't have any grounds to say that it should be 250 or 150 or 200. It's it's their number. I don't know, Jason, if you could yeah. speak to that. Sure. The, the the settlement negotiations were a three-way negotiation between the city, uh, Hunter Bank, and City Place Burlington. It was uh, multiple days of negotiations. The mayor participated. The short answer is that this, these were the terms that were, were negotiated. Should the commission desire different terms, uh, that would send us back to the negotiating table. Uh, so the council has approved all the other terms as were negotiated, and uh, this was our best effort. Uh, I was involved. Uh, Jeff jumped in at the last second uh, in, in terms of this specific component. And we did actually push back on, on some uh, areas where they wanted indefinite as many spaces as they needed. We ratcheted down after five years, you know, that they couldn't increase without our permission. So we did try to best represent as we understood your interest. So the short answer is we can't change the terms without going back and renegotiating. Okay. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to put that on the table if it was an option. And just for clarity, I mean, it says for up to 200 permits. Mm. Yeah, it's an allocation just like every other okay. allocation. Is up to they could buy them all, up to 10. give us they lots of money and not use them. Yeah, okay. Okay. But in five years, that'll give us a chance to work on some TDM measures to try and convince them they don't need 200. Great. <laughs> City Place is required by their zoning permit to have pretty intense transportation demand management. They have to provide free bus passes for the initial period, half off bus passes for subsequent years. Um, car share has to be on site. Uh, they have to provide over 300 bike parking spaces, most of which are inside the building and covered. So there are significant requirements in the zoning permit. And this may not have no effect on our vote, but. Is there a lead qualification that they're shooting for with this? Do they do those kind of things? Do you even know? If That's you don't funny. know, I can look it up later. Well, no, in curious. the original development agreement, there was a, a lead requirement, but I'm not sure if that carried through with the amended and restated development agreement that was just approved. I believe it did, but I would need to double check. Because that's where we, we get some significant gains in TDM and you know bike facilities, indoor, covered bike parking, showers, all the things that you need, the amenities to encourage people not to drive, which I also agree is counterintuitive since that's how you make your money. <laughs> so it's a delicate balance, and I understand it. So, mm -hmm. all right. All right, we'll look forward to that conversation on another, another <laughs> night. Yeah. Is there any other discussion around the motion? All right, so you know, let's, uh, yes. I, I, I will probably support this. However, I'm, I really do not, feel that it is um, the best scenario that we should have had, but um, I'm just, I know Jeff worked hard on this and I do have confidence in his work, but um, I don't think this was probably the best way to go forward um, because it does specify, you know, priority to one developer and that, that does um, tie the hands of the public to be able to have some of those monthly parkers otherwise getting their own 
individual spots or the or the or improvements in the transient retail parking so I, I feel like it says it makes a statement but I'm supporting it only because of the fact that it it um, I'm hoping that it will actually turn out well as you expect it will all right any other discussion on the motion Let's go to a vote then. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes five to zero. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll add that item to the January, February, whenever that Great. Yep. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your confidence. All right. Moving forward, agenda five, agenda item five, fiscal year 22 goals and objectives. Director right. Spencer, take it away. You're all alone, too. <laughs> <laughs> so in your packet uh, that I am working on trying to share right now um, is, aha, uh -huh, I think, there, let's see if I can get that to work now. In your packet is the proposed goals and objectives for FY22. It's been revised and updated since our last meeting to reflect some of your feedback and additional public review and wanted to present it here for your review and it's your choice whether or not you would like to officially kind of accept it or, uh, or not. Uh, it can be used either way by you all in reviewing my performance in the assistant director city engineers performance uh, annually uh, every spring. So uh, happy to answer any questions and let me see if I can uh, share this great All thank right. you yep while we're working on sharing so we'll open it up for commissioner discussion on this um, Commissioner overview do you care to start on this the goals my, on, my only question of it is uh, where is the parking services still at the police department that you're talking about moving uh, and your item 11 um, so uh, that is a good question. We are, uh, they are still at 1 North Avenue currently. Uh, we have a plan to relocate them uh, here this fall and expect them to be in uh, Pine Street around October, September, October. Okay, that was, yeah. that's the only yep. question I had on this. I don't, I don't, it, my, my feeling is I don't, feel like we need to ad adopt this and endorse it or anything. I think it's a helpful document, but I don't feel like it's something we need to vote on. That's just my opinion. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Commissioner Montano. Yeah, my only question is about actually exactly that. So uh, if we were to accept this communication, sort of like what force would it have? And like, how is it different from just like reading it here and then using it later just as a document that was in, in our dossier, I guess? Right. Uh, there's no kind of ordinance or charter requirement that the commission approve an annual work plan by the department. Uh, I brought this forward early in my tenure as a way of uh, demonstrating to the commission and to the public what the department saw as our priorities for the coming year, uh, both as a tool to uh, monitor uh, leadership's performance, but also just to be transparent with the public about what uh, we see as uh, the highest needs in the city based on the input we've received from the public. So um, you don't should not feel any uh, requirement to approve, uh, though, you know, by accepting it, one could uh, see that, you know, you, you've kind of blessed this direction and then would uh, be expecting us to perform to it. And this is available on the department website? Uh, it, it is, yes. We've got it available on the commission page, and uh, I'm sure we could find a, another spot for it too to make it a little more accessible. It's in the packet right now. Sweet. Yeah. I guess my last question is sort of going back to like the outreach component. Like, how do we make sure that people like outside the commission, outside of the people that have the capacity to like come to these meetings or like hear about it, um, to be aware about what DPW does? Uh, yes, uh, Rob, do you want to talk a little bit about the outreach and especially reaching out to diverse constituencies that we've listed here? Okay, we kind of like talked about it last time yeah. with like okay. that, but yeah. just about like these goals like in, in, in particular. Right. 
Yeah, that's a great yeah. question. I, I'll admit that uh, we haven't done any outreach specifically around this document, though I think that could be useful. What we do try to do when we bring forward um, I, you know, important initiatives either to council or to here or to both is to make sure that goes out um, via Front Porch Forum to the city council, to you folks. Um, whether it comes to you or not, we want you to be aware as kind of primary stakeholders in the city with respect to our work. We try to use social media. Uh, depending on the issue, we'll have um, public meetings, neighborhood meetings. Those are some of the you know media advisories just to try to generate um, knowledge or interest about our work. These are some of the primary tools we'll use to get the word out. Uh, in terms of commission-specific meetings, uh, there are some statutory obligations that we have, which is includes posting the agenda in three physical locations, warning the, the meeting and having it posted on the city calendar and the DPW website right on the front page. Um, um, I, th I think those are the statutory requirements. We have a MailChimp listserv that folks can sign up for specific things, DPW agendas, you know, recycling, um, uh, recycling uh, missed pickups, things like that. And um, yeah, so there's kind of a suite of things we're doing. I think, I think one of the useful things we've uh, heard over the years is sometimes there are gaps in uh, knowledge about our work, and we've heard from the commission before what you know different ways to bridge that or different things we could be sharing with the community, and that's in, that's included uh, things like the context around sidewalk and paving work to be more explicit about you know how this is wrapped up into this larger initiative of sustainable infrastructure things like that so we're always receptive to any feedback you have but um, but we try to keep a pretty broad suite of tools to let the public know about what we're doing I, and I know we talked about it last week but yeah. uh, to director Spencer's point um, we're also trying to bridge the gap on the equitable communication side and I think I raised a lot of what we were trying to do last week or last month pleased to say we've made even more progress in terms of uh, working with a real-time interpretation service on two specific issues we're moving forward on, which is uh, uh, the water resources assistance programs recently um, put forth, brought forth to council, and uh, future consolidated collection outreach where folks who have questions but there are language barriers will be able to call in and usually in real time be patched through to a third party interpretation service. Can't say that'll work every time, but it's a very good service that the city's used at the Resource and Recovery Center we're pleased to bring forward in a couple other initiatives. So, you know, we're trying to uh, we're trying to make sure we have a broad kind of platform of ways to let the community know about um, things we're working on. But we're also very receptive to the gaps you may see out there. Great. Thanks so much for the update, and thanks for the specifics. Like, this is really a great document, and like, I, it's a great help for me being new here, especially. So, thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Barr. Sure. I, I, unfortunately, I wasn't here for July, but I did read through the notes and I saw some of the changes that you made. And I'll, I'll say two things about this. One, I, I think it's a great document and I'm glad you instituted it. When I first got here, this was something that helped guide me in all the decisions and all the conversations that we had. And the other thing I want to point out, our esteemed colleague, Commissioner Overby, had created a document which I've used at my uh, neighborhood planning assemblies. And this is one of those documents, too, that when people ask about something, I can talk about those kind of things there to try and answer them and, and give them you know, a, a route or a process that they can go if they have any concerns. And so uh, if you haven't seen Sobik's document, it's, it's pretty good. It has a, a, a really good all-in-one place reference for us. So that's a great thing. But other than that, I, I think this is great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Vice Chair O'Neill Lacco. Um, yeah, I think this is a great document. It's mm -hmm. certainly what I use, like the kind of thing I use for work, so it's it certainly mm -hmm. fits within my wheelhouse. Um, I, I like this for us. I like it for, for the public. Um, I also um, think it helps us at the end of the year um, for our evaluation. Um, and the piece about communication, which I, we're all concerned about the infrastructure issues right in front of our house, right? Mm -hmm. And what I really appreciated, um, in case you needed to over Lake Park on my side of the street needs to be, <laughs> the sidewalks are horrible. <laughs> what, what I've really appreciated, I think um, the, the, um, your staff has done gr a great job, is the, the signage um, when you're gonna do side work, sidewalk work, um, because I, 
as as a resident then I don't have to look for it um, if um, I'm not a native English speaker there are enough um, visuals on there that could give me a clue um, there's the logo so I think pieces like that make it um, make it accessible um, and recognizing that our kind of Western or just even say you know Burlingtonian sense of outreach um, you know has its own kind of construct and biases and I really appreciate the efforts to go into some of the community meetings um, because some of our neighbors don't have trust in public institutions some of them don't have the bandwidth to dig d dive deep on this and so hitting at least starting by hitting some of those um, kind of critical infrastructure pieces like the, the water resources that are um, available um, and then looking at some of the other other projects that are bigger until we get to the point where you know a lot of this then just becomes second nature so I do appreciate um, you know over the years seeing the incredible work um, on communications that Thank you. Uh, just checking for the phone. Do we have Commissioner Bose for this one? Uh, we do have Commissioner Bose back on the line. Um, and actually, sorry, he has dropped off since the last time I looked at the screen. So I think there are some tech troubles. Check that. Okay. He reported that uh, he had some trouble rejoining. Um, sorry that he missed the vote and just wants an update on what happened, which I'll share with him. Well, we're sorry to hear that, but thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the update. Uh, is that just me then? All right. Uh, yeah, thanks. A couple things. Um, what's the latest on BTV stat and uh, the department's calendar for briefing out something? Yes. Um, we are, uh, the city is queuing BTV stat back up again. Uh, and uh, we are looking to have Public Works' his first presentation in November, likely. So at that point, we could certainly come to you. Uh, we are not fully live yet with the asset management software. So this uh, time we will uh, be doing probably more manual compilation of our data as we discussed last month. Mm -hmm. uh, but hopeful uh, in 2022 when we come to you that you'll be able to see a lot more dynamic data that we can bring to you for your review. Great, thank you. Yeah, I understand that'll <clears throat> take some time to spin up or very looking forward to the, yeah. the outputs there. We are too. <laughs> Speaking of being able to measure something, um, what's our, in terms of uh, transportation options say, what's our ability to measure mode share? Uh, it's a, 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 uh, in the paragraph of metrics. I mean, certainly that's a, right. we, we, like qualitatively to be speaking of those things, but do we, um, do we have right. an ability to measure? Uh, we rely on other data sources, predominantly the American Community Survey, which is an annual census uh, uh, survey. It is not uh, every uh, resident, but it is a statistical sample. Uh, Commissioner O'Neill Vivanco is probably using that service, uh, that data set as well for some of her work on campus. Um, but uh, that gives us at least a baseline to see trend data year over year. That update got to my last question. Um, thanks. Yeah, and I appreciate you um, putting this out there for for the city's benefit. Good. All right. Uh, that's all of our commissioners. Uh, Jack, is there any uh, any members of the public maybe you'd be interested in commenting on this? There's nobody uh, on right now. All right. Uh, it was warned on the agenda. Is an option of a vote, but we are not required to take any action here. Um, sort of. We can vote not to take action. <laughs> <laughs> that way we fit the, the warning and. Well, yeah, or we could. Try to work it in the confines. Isn't there no other comments? I would be happy to close this and move forward. All right. Yeah, thanks for the, the discussion here. Agenda item six, approval of draft minutes from the July 20th meeting. Um, Mr. Golding, I appreciate you shared a draft, right? Were there any? Um, right. We did it. Any revisions to that is? We did get feedback and um, let's see if 
this is on my end here. Can you? For some reason, that your side is. Uh, right. There. I can just leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we did receive um, input from uh, now public member, prior uh, Commissioner Archambault, uh that we had the wrong meeting date on our minutes for the next meeting date. So he submitted, I think, a, a timely, important revision to make sure we had a, the proper meeting date reflected on the July minutes, which is today, August 18th. It had been listed as September 15th. And that was the only change we had for July. Okay. Welcome a motion on the. I move to approve the draft minutes for the meeting from July 20th, 2021. Thank you for that motion. Commissioner Montano. I second that motion. Oh, that's right. Oh, this one. <laughs> All right, we have a motion. It's been seconded by Vice Chair Nivavaco. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion around that motion? Was the meeting the 21st or the 20th? We have a dis discontinuity between the title on the minutes and the draft minutes being 720. What? The meeting was, the was the 20, 21st. Was the 21st? Wednesday, the 21st, yeah. Okay, so we're fine. It, the minutes are correct. It's just the uh, men by agenda motion. that's not. <laughs> I think we're clear. We're Thank clear. You. We're good. Any other discussion around that motion? All right. Um, let's, uh, we have another commissioner on the phone. Is that correct? Correct. Nobody is on the phone. All right. So five of us present, four of us who are eligible to vote in the July minutes as having attended there. Um, for those eligible commissioners, let's bring it to a vote then. All in favor of approving the minutes as moved. Aye. 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 Aye for myself, thank you. And one abstains, thank you. July minutes have passed. Moving forward, we have a uh, request to revisit the June minutes. Mr. Golden, could you pull those up for our reference here? So we had a, uh, a staff member who brought to our attention that um, someone from the RPC who was here during the June minutes had submitted some changes that unfortunately due to staff error did not make their way into uh, your packet for that month for consideration. Most of them are, I think, fairly minor. Uh, one was uh, recognized as more substantive, so we want to bring that one to your attention. And I can bring up this passage here that's mm -hmm. highlighted. That's the, the proposed revision. R revised language right here. Sorry, yeah, the track yeah. changes here are is the proposed provision from the original. Okay. Seems like a fair point to. In your, in your packet, there were a few other minor um, adjustments. If you wanted to factor that in, I'm not sure if that's uh, mm -hmm. necessary, but just wanted to bring that to your attention for the motion. Sure. Thank you. All right, um, in terms of June minute eligibility to vote, it would be Commissioner Overby, myself, Vice Chair O'Neill Bavanco, and Commissioner Barr. Um, any? A motion to accept discussion? the amended minutes. We have a motion, thank you. I second that motion. The motion's been from Commissioner Barr, seconded by Vice Chair O'Neill Bavanco. Is there any discussion around the motion? I, was say, I restrain myself from trying to propose some changes that I would have made, but I think I'll leave it as is. All right. So, any other discussion around the motion? Let's go to a vote then. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye, aye for myself. Well, it stands, Mr. Montanu, and the minutes carry. 
with a four to zero with one abstained. Thank you. Moving forward to it, uh, an item A, director's report. All right, we're humming along tonight. Uh, thank you, and uh, thanks to Commissioner Overby uh, who flagged, uh, I think, the most sub substantive item on the uh, director's report this month, the South End Construction Coordination Plan. Uh, I had a attached memo to my director's report that was uh, shared with the Board of Finance, uh, and this plan will be coming to the Council on September 13th. Fundamentally, uh, we can summarize this plan as follows. There are many large infrastructure projects coming to the South End uh, in the next uh, five or so years. Uh, that is in part due to uh, the, uh, our collective success in bringing legacy projects to construction. Uh, it's part due to um, uh, the support that you and the public have had over renewed uh, infrastructure reinvestment and the dynamism of the South End. So we staff have listened to some of the concerns of the community, especially coming out of COVID, on how to minimize impacts in the South End as these projects come forward. As we looked at all the different projects, uh, we laid out a spreadsheet that is in your packet that shows us, uh, most notably, uh, splitting the Champlain Parkway into two construction uh, phases, or we call them construction contracts. Uh, the initial construction contract for the Champlain Parkway would construct the middle section from, uh, from Home Avenue North to Kilburn Street, and would uh, make the, the final construction contract would include the connection to the interstate highway system south of Home Avenue, and the improvements in the King and Maple neighborhood. Uh, fundamentally, uh, this does a number of things. Uh, it brings the improvements, uh, many improvements from the parkway ahead uh, more quickly, while also uh, limiting the increase in traffic in the South End until the improvements in the South End are made to receive that traffic. Uh, so uh, as we've discussed prior, uh, the Rail Yard Enterprise Project, which is one of these projects, uh, will divert a lot of traffic out of Upper Pine Street and is projected to reduce traffic over current levels, even with the Champlain Parkway and other projects constructed. So um, we think this is, this is a really strong key to unlock uh, in a proper fashion uh, these investments in a way that minimize impact in the South End. We'll be going to council next month to get input and to ask approval for the next parkway contract amendment for our consultant team. Uh, and there is, a, there is a viable path to bring a construction contract to the council to review uh, in 2022 for the initial construction contract for the parkway. Should the um, council approve uh, the general plan as laid out here uh, in September. It's a chunky memo. It's a nuanced piece. I don't want to uh, talk it to death, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you for that. Um, with that, and I guess as noted up, up front, we're open to having an agenda item to take a closer look at that. Fully uh, worn if we fit it in in, a, in an upcoming meeting this this fall, we appreciate the the look at it, and it seems great at its at its surface there. Um, so, open up to Commissioner Communications at this time. Any uh, comments, Commissioner Mutano? No comments. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Barr. I had just one, and it's it's probably just going to be refreshing my memory um, with a great bike infrastructure that we've put in place these last many years. Uh, one of the things that I'm finding is there tends to be a lot of debris and broken glass. And I'm just curious what the street sweeping um, methodologies are as, as to how often it might happen. Is it something that you have to get through a C-click fix and then you come and clean it up? Or I'm just, I'm just asking. Um, I've had several flat tires myself, so I'm just wondering. Great. You want to handle that? Sure, happy to. Yeah, so um, we've, we've actually uh, dealt with this um, kind of comment and question regularly because it is a, a fairly consistent concern of the 
community, the biking community especially. Um, after talking to our street maintenance team a lot about this, you know, one of the couple of things they're, they're focused on, they're sweeping almost uh, sometimes six days a week, uh, including on Sundays all across the city. I think every street gets swept, um, certainly at least once a year during Operation Clean Sweep. Um, the major arteries are getting swept weekly. Um, and then other kind of major streets are getting swept fairly regularly. They haven't landed on a consistent, predictable schedule. But one of the things they, they regularly can confirm, like something like Colchester Avenue is getting swept at least weekly. The problem is a lot of the reports we'll get um, happen to come after kind of it gets swept and then they either have to come back via a C-click fix report, which is, which is definitely a, a thing we encourage because um, that's what helps us get to streets you know, smaller streets, side streets that we don't get to as regularly. That's what informs the work plan to make sure we get to those streets. Um, we uh, did just uh, get another sweeper, uh, so the, a smaller sweeper that's able to kind of manipulate into the bike lanes a little bit more nimbly. And so I think they've just gotten through a round of training at least a few weeks ago. And so that should be out in the field now. And hopefully we're seeing that progress in real time. Um, you know, there, so, we, we don't have a consistent schedule, and I think that's related to the fact that we have some folks out at times that need to be redeployed to sidewalk projects or redeployed to other kind of urgent issues that come up. But I think they're really trying to land in a more predictable place with uh, regular sweeping, especially of arteries. I think it's pretty recognized that it's a priority of the communities, and so they're, they're definitely trying to, um, I think, work through that. And, and the questions that I've received from people aren't, aren't so much complaining as is what is the process. So now I can tell them. So that's that's great. Thanks. Uh, the other thing, again, having to do with bike lanes, and it's I, I want to say that it's the trash haulers, not so much as the cities recycle, but uh, often the containers will be put into the bike lanes once they're emptied, mm -hmm. and it becomes a, an obstacle course. And I, I don't know, I mean, if we ever move forward on the other project that we've been talking about several several meetings that that might fix itself, uh, but I don't know if there's something that we can talk to the to the trash haulers to try and do a little bit better job. It's 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 the early morning commutes I think that are mm -hmm. getting affected by this mm -hmm. on those whatever days they pick up on whatever streets. So that that was that was pretty much. I, I did have one other thing, and a lot of folks in the old East End are asking this question because there was paint on the ground at the head of Chase Street where it meets. Colchester Avenue with the intent of making it a, 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 a right turn as opposed to a sweep turn. Um, I'm just curious if there's a timeline for that. That's another question that I get. And I, yeah. I, I believe that we are putting in the temporary uh, quick build uh, installations this year. Okay. Uh, we will confirm with you uh, right. that that will occur Yes. So yeah, another, I think September is the next MPA, and I'm sure that's when a yeah. couple people will probably ask me. So if okay. you have an answer by then, great. If yeah. not, I'll tell them. We're you know, the we, we can get you an answer by then. Nice. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. I had the same question last month. Excuse, yeah. excuse me. Excuse me. I was here, it. so I was <laughs> channeling somebody then. Yeah. yeah. Keep asking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vice Chair Neil Bavanka. Um, so kind of to the, to the bike lane, um, Sweeping it, it is um, is like a litter vacuum thing a, a possibility, or is it really street sweeping that is um, the better tool? And I just asked this because I just had a meeting with someone who has an electric like street sweep street vacuum <laughs> that's forty eight inches, and I was like, oh gosh, I think that would be great for bike lanes. Um, but I don't know if there are different, you know, the, the, the short of it is, are there different tools that are, I mean, I know we need to do like the big street sweep during Operation Clean Sweep because it's like muck and it's hard and frozen, but the maintenance pieces um, during kind of non, um, you know, during summer weather, is there is there a better tool? And I don't know if there's a way to kind of look at maybe what other municipalities that have um, you know robust um, bike lanes use to be able to say okay maybe this is this is a better tool to deploy so that was again literally today I was <laughs> on a call the dangers right um, and then um, a bigger question is um, is public works involved in the Burlington School District district discussions with the, the high school location I mean they came out with 16 
possible locations, some of which um, made my heart stop for some reasons. And um, in thinking about the location of some of these possible sites, and I get they're still possible, um, it's still a list, they're gonna whittle it down. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and I know how permitting goes, it would be really great if um, Public Works, and, and I know you're all overtapped, to be in on the discussions um, in thinking about how our public infrastructure fits in with um, any potential sites once that list gets shortened. Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner O'Neill Vivanco, that uh, uh, sings, uh, sings a, a melody that uh, I am also uh, singing because uh, just yesterday I sent an email to Superintendent Thomas Flanagan uh, asking for us to be engaged in the site selection process. Uh, I think we want to be a help in uh, identifying some large initial risks. Uh, a development consultant that they have may be able to identify some risk, but we may know better in terms of water lines and pressure, uh, contaminated soils that may be in the area or other issues around traffic and capacity that can help them understand is there an order of magnitude issue that needs to be managed and addressed when you're comparing the different sites so that you really do have the best information at your disposal. So um, we uh, are eager to lend that expertise and have offered that. Uh, we're waiting to hear back, but I know they had to plan for their big meeting last night. So. That's, that's great. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, that and the conservation board. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Overby. Um, I had just a comment, a question about, since I did read your, uh, the, the South End Construction Coordination Plan, I know we're going yeah. to talk about that at length, but I did, I, yeah. I had gotten communications in the past about the, uh, the whole timing of the Champlain Parkway project, and I had Two questions. I know the plan that the that Pine Street Coalition. There's still, I guess, litigation happening in their quote right way uh, proposal. And I'm just wondering if the um, and and maybe I could wait if you need to do that. But but I'm just curious about the the the, the fact of roundabouts on Pine Street and and those uh, and those other things. Is the you know and I and I think it looks like the middle section. You know the way that you've proposed that this the construction is the middle sections sort of get done and then the ends. And um, so the first question is about the, the design of those middle sections. Can they be done with roundabouts, or are these all signalized things? You know, at, at the point that you're at now, that's the, that's my first question about that. The quick answer is that they are uh, designed as signals, uh, which is the historic design that basically it's just a phasing of the construction of the project, not a redesign of the project. And that said, the Agency of Transportation gave us in 2017 very clear written guidance that we have the flexibility in the future to make any changes on the project corridor that the community wants. Obviously, we need to work to see if there's federal and state participation, depending on what the proposal is, but that they are giving us the flexibility to shift the infrastructure based on the future needs of the corridors. So, so, so while we install it as signalized intersections, depending on future uses and needs and opportunities in the south end, uh, additional changes, adjustments uh, could be made. But what I'm, what I'm meaning is if this, if this proposed um, timing is done, can that be done in the, the first phase of it as roundabouts? Or you're saying it's done, we spend the money to do the, the, uh, the signals. So I think that's gonna continue to probably be a, a bone of contention. So anyway, mm -hmm. that was the question I had. And the second part of it was with the the second, the ends being done second, does that also allow the possibility of the rail yard enterprise connection to get in, get done before, uh, so we don't again spend the money to, you know, run up from, from uh, Kilburn all the way up to Maple and then spend this money to go, you know, the railroad enterprise, because the timing of that, right. I'm just wondering about the timing of this for, you know, maybe that will provide an opportunity for that to happen uh, in a way that uh, will we'll, we'll redirect the traffic from the, the Maple King neighborhood. The plan is, it, is it laid out uh, in the packet is that the improvements in the south end, all the various improvements from the roundabout at Shelburne Street to the Rail Yard Enterprise Project 
would happen before or concurrently with the last phase of the parkway, which would be the interstate connection and the King Mabel neighborhood. Projects can shift and change, but this is a historic uh, presentation that never before have we looked at splitting the parkway into two projects and two uh, phases, construction contracts, and trying to complete other south end projects uh, before or concurrent with the final phase of the parkway. So this is a this is a really uh, a seemingly small change that actually is profound in its impact and unlocks a lot of opportunity. We are going on a road show with key stakeholders meeting with uh, the Vermont racial justice team, with local motion, with businesses in the south end, uh, past litigants on the project to explain this and to get their feedback. And to date, uh, people have been uh, understanding that this is a this is a very positive development. The, the, yeah, the scheduling. So yeah. I can see you've done a lot of thought in it. So I, 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 I appreciate getting to read it and I'm looking forward to actually having probably a better presentation of it when we have it on our agenda. Great. Thank, that's all I had. All right. And uh, just checking the phones quick. So we have no other commissioners. All clear on the phones. All right. Um, one thing on my end, I will note, I heard a, a concern from a resident about uh, visibility at the intersection of Grant and North Union, um, about the, 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 the planters and whether it's planters, if you're coming from Grant or obstructing view um, upstream on Union. Uh, I didn't see anything active in C Click Fix and just forwarded on to our customer service team to, um, to take a look at. Don't know the backstory there, but just. No, it's, uh, it's actually good news because we have a, a project in the construction port, at least uh, I'll confirm that it's in there, uh, to permanently adjust curb for the old North End Greenway uh, so that we can, can remove the bollards and the planters now that we've gotten feedback that the greenway is working and want to continue it so we'll install the permanent curbs which will lower the any obstructions uh in that area oh nice and still meet the same stay the same goals. benefit yep very good all right uh, nothing further on my side with that i will close out commissioner communications look to um motion to adjourn agenda. item 10 let's see here what are you <laughs> Sorry, did I jump? Oh, we're good <laughs> item 10 adjournment and next meeting day september 15th commissioner barr mm -hmm. we have a motion to adjourn is there a second i second that second motion adjourn. and emotion all right <laughs> <laughs> i have a second vice chair O'Neill babanco is there any discussion around that motion <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned to 756.